Good morning, everybody in Obsessed. I'm excited today because we have a very special guest by the name of Vanessa Haldane. Now, her story is incredible. Um, I just actually can't wait to share um, her journey with you. She is the founder of of Journey to Worthy, and it's a movement and business that works to inspire women. So it's basically at whatever stage of the journey they're at to promote self-love, growth, and the happiness and freedom that comes from discovering your self-worth. Vanessa, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. It's I, I'm so stoked. I am so, so pleased that you're actually joining us because at the moment in the climate with you know, there's a lot of attention at the moment on human trafficking, child sex trafficking, and nothing makes my heart sing more than people that are willing to come forward and share their journey and their story. So let's just get straight into it because I'm that kind of chick. Like what, what is your why? What's your background? What makes you tick? Oh, so my, my why um, begins from when I was a, a child. I experienced childhood sexual abuse um, at the hands of my grandfather. And that's not something I've talked about openly until very recently because with that came a lot of guilt and shame. Um, following that, guilt and shame led me to toxic relationships in my life. Uh, I ended up in a domestic violent relationship from the age of 14. Um, sexual assaults occurred as well. I ended up in a group home. I ended up in lockup. Um, as, a, as a punishment for running away from my abuser. Uh, I became wow. a teen mum. Uh, I, I mean, I'm just brushing over all these things like they're nothing and they're not nothing, but my why, it's such a long story, but it all, it all comes from my traumatic experiences in my life and the journey that I have gone on to become this. I'm so happy. <laughs> I'm yeah. so happy and blessed and grateful for the life that I have. And I know that a lot of women especially can't understand how that's possible. How? How? Everything that's happened, I've heard your story. How are you happy? And I just want to be able to share that it is it is possible and that your past doesn't define you and that a future life of success and happiness is 100% possible. Yeah, and that we're not, we're not our past and we can let that go. So, I mean, look, at the age of 14, so at the mm. age of 14, so w w you were a young mum, obviously. I mean, you just said that. 17. And you're right. You do kind of brush over it and you're like, oh, you know, this happened and whatever have you. And I think this is probably one of the biggest things that I've always, like through my need of wanting to talk about, speak out about child sexual abuse and why it hasn't been taken seriously, because the impact is not really recognised until after the fact. And, and you can't immediately see why. And then, and, and I'm assuming that you would have just been labelled as a wayward child, correct? Oh, yep. Uh, especially as a teenager. Oh, she's such a hassle. She's a delinquent teenager. And I, I, you don't have insight as a teenager as to why you've got these feelings. I have that insight now. I know that my behaviour and my acting out and all those feelings that I had inside were because of guilt, shame, um, f feelings of the lack of self-worth growing up that all stemmed from that sexual abuse so the impact of the abuse doesn't just stop when you tell mum and dad that it's been happening and it stops it doesn't stop then it's, it's impact, impacted me for the rest of my life still to this day I have nightmares about it um can, and I'm you, terrified sorry. yes no sorry I don't I can mean to cut you off I, I'm because I'm, I'm a like I love to have the conversations that most people don't get privy to like and literally that conversation of having what was that like if you don't mind sharing having that conversation with your parents almost like a coming out like how did that happen Me, i mean do you know thinking about it now it my my brother played a pivotal role in that because he would have i was only eight and he would have only been 10 but he came to me one night and said ness you need to tell mum and dad or i'm going to and i remember not wanting him to have to have that conversation with them and say the rude words because that's what it feels like, that they're naughty words, embarrassing things. Um, so I told mum and I can't remember exactly what I told her because I was so young, but I do remember begging her not to tell dad because it was my dad's dad. Mm -hmm. And I was so embarrassed about saying these naughty words and I didn't want dad to know. And of course she told dad um, and dad went straight over there and, and, and dealt with it. But it was... Following that, I felt like I had turned everyone's life upside down and I had so much guilt from that because the entire family dynamic changed. Mum was crying all the time. Dad was sad. 
my my brother felt funny. I felt funny. It, it, everything changed. Christmases were different. The whole family was different, and everyone I felt looked at me differently. Well, I suppose as a young child, you would feel a responsibility. Like everything's changed and everything's different as a result of you my sharing fault. something. Yeah. Yeah, and had I just not said anything, nothing would have changed. That's what I was, you know, that internal dialogue. Yeah, and that's part of the sciencing. And this is mm-hmm. this is why it's important. And thank you. Thank you so much for being willing to actually talk about it because there's not many people that, that will because it can be triggering and painful and, and, and all of those things. So I'm really grateful to you for actually sharing that because it's it's a hard thing to talk about. So good on you. And Thank you. Thank you for good on you. talking about it. <laughs> Yeah, and this is it, Um, and this is why I'm saying the climate right now is perfect for people like yourself to come out, talk about the hard shit, and then actual actually be able to say, "Hey, but this is not the end. This is not this is part of my story. It's not the end of my story." So fast forward a little bit. You had a so you've got a baby or babies. You have children at seventeen. Yep, seventeen. I had my first child, and twenty, my second. Yeah. Oh wow. You look mm. amazing, just saying. <laughs> how's, it, how's it been being a, a mother uh, that's actually come through and survived the, an, an abusive situation? What's that like? It's, I've been blessed with three daughters and I've been given daughters for a reason and I, have, uh, I, I, I think it's made me a better mother. Um, it's made me hyper aware, some people would say, but I feel that I've protected them more so because I'm I'm very aware of signs and grooming and all of that sort of stuff so I've been able to protect them and also try and raise them to be to be aware of the signs to be independent worthy women that don't find their self-worth in what men think of them which is was my issue growing up because my Mm -hmm. self-worth had been defined from a little girl in the, the the pleasing of a man yeah yeah, and that is actually now that's your jam, isn't it? So you now have a company. So tell me, tell me about that. So Journey to Worthy, it it started initially. I just started in my Instagram, and I'm like, I'm going to start sharing. I'm going to open up about my eating disorder. It's just something that we need to talk about more, and I just want to help one woman. So I wrote a blog, and I started sharing um, real photos and things like that. And women started reaching out to me and saying, oh my goodness, this is how I feel too. Oh, wow. I think I've actually got an eating disorder. These thoughts that you've described do exactly and, and patterns of what I'm doing. And then I started sharing a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. And, um, I was out to lunch with a friend one day and I said, you know, I just want to help women on this journey to worthy. And I'm like, oh, that's that's what this is. It's a it's a journey to worthy, and this is what I need to be doing. I need to be helping women, and um, I just decided to become more more raw. So it started on Instagram, started as a blog, and then I wanted to to have something tangible for women, so that you know they could be part of this what I like to call an army. So I I created the teas, and with every tea purchased, we I need one. I want one. <laughs> I, 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 I should have thought about it. I'm really not wearing something with the word worthy on it. But for me, it's like when I wear it out, I hold my head higher because I'm just like, mm-hmm, yep, don't mess with me. I've got boundaries. I'm worthy. Like don't yeah. even try me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, exactly. you know, I've set my boundaries now. But it was something that women could go, okay, I'm beginning this journey. How can I? how can I say that I'm a part of this army? And, you know, so they purchase the teas and they're sharing on the, their stories on social media if they want to. And just um, I, I started the hashtag journey to worthy that is searchable on social media so that women can find each other. Um, and then it just grew from there. I developed the podcast because people were sharing their stories with me and I'm like, these stories need to be told. You know, it's not just my story anymore. This is a journey to worthy isn't just about me. It's about all women. So I want to share their stories too. And then I held a shoot last year. I just wanted normal, everyday women who just didn't feel worthy. I wanted to get their hair and makeup done, pop them in their tea and and have a beautiful photo shoot with them. And they created friendships. And I was like, we need to do events. I need to do events. I need to go everywhere and do these events and bring women together as a community. So that's COVID stuff that royally. But um, thank you, COVID. How rude. The first event is happening in September and it's just different just different to any other event that's 
out there. It's not just for mums in business. It's not just, you know, for women in business or, you know, mums or anything like that. It's for all women. There's going to be an Ogland interpreter. So our deaf, we've got deaf army members as well. That's why I always use captions on my stories. Um, can be a part of it. It's wheelchair accessible and dress up, dress down, wear what you want. It's not about being Instagram worthy or anything like that. It's about forming these friendships and connections and invoking a conversation around self-worth. Oh my god, that's amazing. where's the first event? Where's it at? At the collective in Palm Beach on the Gold Coast. What's the date? Sorry, Nat- so, Natalie's off camera here. She's like nodding. She's going, It's sold out. How rude. Maybe we could come and cover it. it would you believe it's sold out? That would be amazing. Yeah. Oh, I've got three spare tickets. Look, look. <laughs> <laughs> it's sold yeah, out. Two yeah, weeks. No. It was super exciting because. I, it, the community bought all the tickets. It wasn't just yeah. my friends and my family and things like that. It was the community. And I'm like, I knew we needed this. I knew we needed this event. This is what people want. This is what people need. And it's going to be a national event. Like I'm going to travel Australia and take it everywhere when COVID pisses off. <laughs> yeah, I like it. Do you know, and it's so nice. And I, I'm just listening to you talk. It is oozing out of you. It is literally, I've got goosebumps. So your energy is actually transferring over to me at a rapid rate of knots. I love seeing someone just in their flow and in their shine and in their element. And that is what you have got going on. And because there's so many people, you haven't used anything that's happened to you as an excuse. And to me, no. that is incredible. I used to, can I be honest? I used to. I used to use my past as reasons for why my life wasn't working, why I, you know, I I had a victim mentality and I wasn't the best friend. I wasn't the best person um, because I was so wrapped up in woe is me and poor me and look at all the things that have happened to me um, Mm -hmm. that I couldn't see. I wasn't grateful for what I had or you know, I was so wrapped up in what had happened to me that everything, I think when you've got that sort of negative mindset that everything bad that happens, you latch onto and you go, oh, there we go, and you miss all the good stuff. Yeah. That just passes yeah. you by because you're not looking for that. You're concentrating on every bad thing so that you can go, told you, told you my yeah. last crap, told you this stuff happens to me all the time. Yeah. Um, so that's that's hard to admit. But, yeah, I, I definitely wasn't always so positive. The fact that you're able to admit that means that you're on the right path and that you're yeah. on the right journey and th- and that this is, because it is hard, it is hard to actually look back and go, you know what, I was a bit of a shit human then. I was making dumb decisions. I wasn't taking full ownership. I wasn't doing the, the stuff and the things required to take me forward and move me forward. Sitting in yeah. that kind of like uh, the circles that feel like a self-perpetuating circle of shit. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly what it feels like. Yeah. yeah, and that saying of when it rains, it pours, I think it's just, yes, bad stuff happens mm. and you can either deal with it and move on with it and still focus on the good things in your life or you can only focus on those things and then it does feel like bad stuff is just pouring down on you because it's all you're looking for and it's all you're focused on. Yeah, you, well, you've got some, like, I, like I've read through your, when, when your story came through and you have some very beautifully powerful statements which i'd like to see on t-shirts ps but like okay no the things that <laughs> take it down <laughs> write it down because statements are powerful and the fact that you're walking around with that t-shirt and that's why i wear it i mean not today so much but quite often i'm wearing t-shirts that we make same deal like the yeah. statement that other people can go you know what this is what i think and it's okay for you to think that way too and it can and be it just a conversation doesn't it people stop mm-hmm. you and they're like what's this what's yeah this yeah. What is it? I, I I want that too. I want a part of that. Yeah. I want to touch that magic. I want to feel what you feel. And I want to, and, and it's beautiful because people like you are spreading and the fact that you're empowering just through sharing your story is epic. I like you. Thank that, you. I like you too. I, this is so nice. It's a love fest. Um, that not everyone will like you. I've got some here and it's not that. That was a bit of a disjointed thing. It's because I just literally read it off a piece of paper instead of going with the flow. But I love the fact that you have made that as a statement. Like, it's okay to not have everybody like you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's part of it, right? The people pleasing and kind of, you know, making, always putting yourself second. And it sometimes when you're putting yourself first, it can feel a little bit self selfish. Yeah. But there's a trick to doing that. Is that right? You've got yeah, those well- tricks. It, it, you've got those tricks. What are they? Tell us those tricks. <laughs> you give them to us. 
immediately. <laughs> it's it's just the way we're raised, I think, you know, is do for others, especially as women. Um, we're nurturers, we're, you know, we're, we're often mothers and, and partners and we've got to be the good friend and, the, and and we always put ourselves last because we're sort of, it's ingrained in us that we need to look after others. But we need, but we're no good to anybody if we're not looking after ourselves first. And it, it does feel selfish, but as you do it more, it doesn't and, and you realise that it's okay to say no. And I now don't feel guilty on cancelling things. I'm, I'm really good now at going oh i'm feeling really i'm going to get sick if i don't slow down i know i'll get sick or i know i'll get exhausted and then and then what then what do i do then where does journey to worthy go i'm no good to anybody um so yeah it's it's about going okay i i recognize that this is all a bit much for me and i'm going to say no to that girl's night out i really want to go but i need to stay home in my jammies and eat pizza and bludge who doesn't want to do that every day that's what i, I do, do. I want to do it now. <laughs> Pizza. <laughs> Next interview we have, that's what we're doing. We're showing up in our PJ. Can we? Can we actually eat pizza? Yes. Let's make that happen. I'll show There's up to your event in pyjamas. For that. People like watching people eat apparently. Yeah. Yeah, it's a thing. That's, I mean, Instagram, taking photos of food and, you know, which you've got a massive following on. P.S., if anybody's watching, please go over to her Instagram page. Shameless plug. We'll do it. We'll put it all in the comments later. Uh, how, did, <laughs> yeah. how did you, because, you know, quite often there's a defining moment. There's There's always something that will happen or it can be a series of things that happened to get your life back on track. Was there a defining moment? Like, or was there a series of things? What was it? I think, so there's been a lot that's happened. And then my father passed away from um, a massive heart attack when I was 25. And that changed my mum. And my mum suffered from post-traumatic stress, depression, disassociative um, personality disorder. She was very, very unwell. And two years after dad passed away, uh, mum attempted to take her life. And that, that made me start looking outside of myself mm. a little bit. And I didn't look at it as, oh, dad's died, this has happened to me, and now mum's done this, this has happened to me. I was like, oh, poor mum, like this is, you know, how can I help her? How can I step up and help mum? And unfortunately she did take her life. I was 31 weeks pregnant with my third daughter and um, she did succeed in taking her life. And that for me was that pivotal moment of I am sick, I'm sick of this, I'm sick of women feeling like crap, I'm, I'm sick of my mum feeling like awful all the time and not feeling like she had support and I want to change, I want to get healthy. I was um, I was still suffering from my eating disorder while pregnant, which is, ugh, that's really yuck to admit. Um, mm -hmm. But it's so just, it is what it is, like, you yeah. know, point making up stories. Um and that was that was the catalyst for me to be like, no, it's time time to make a change. This has affected my children, um, losing their grandma, and I tried to protect them because they were fourteen and eleven, protect them from knowing what had happened. But my fourteen year old knew. I only found out a few years ago that she was aware the whole time, which is unfortunate because she didn't talk to me about it because she didn't want me to know that she knew. Um, but look, that started the, we were like, let's have this baby and then let's move to the Gold Coast and start fresh and um, leave Victoria behind where a lot of the bad memories were uh, and, and start start a new life and really start working on that health. And I started getting therapy um, and seeing a specific psychologist for disordered eating um, and, yeah, learning how to, to get past it all and put it all behind me. Well, all the all massive credit to you because uh, look, I mean, it's all the helps out there, and and uh, there's so many people that you meet through your life, and, and you hear people's stories, and, and it's like, well, no one's there to help me. It's just like, well, there's plenty of things, there's plenty of places you can go. It's just it's the willingness to want to fight to survive. And there's I, social I, media now. Like I didn't, I didn't have. There was no social media when I was in my violent relationship, or being a teen mom, or suffering from disordered eating or anxiety. I honestly didn't know what was happening to me. But there's Google now, and there's um, Facebook support groups and social media accounts that are so inspiring and empowering, and and you know things like like what you're doing. There, there's all these things now that there just weren't. So it's all at our fingertips, and it's up to yeah. us. And with the social media thing, it's up to us who we follow too. And that's so, so, so important. 
Yeah, it is. And, and it's important what we consume and what we actually bring into our energetic space, what we bring into, it's no different from eating. You know, you yeah. put junk food in your body, you put junk food in your mind. It affects I like that. everything. Yeah, yeah. So, man, like seriously, you're awesome. I mean, I don't, you are such an inspiration. I'm, I'm seriously covered in goosebumps. It's oh, just so you. beautiful. Oh, no, look, thank you. Thank you for actually putting yourself out there to have a conversation about it and being so real. Like back it up a bit, you know, talking about having an eating disorder and while you were pregnant. And it's so easy for people to judge, to say, oh, that's terrible. She's being so selfish. And it's just like you just never know. You just don't know people's backstories. The thing is, I guess I could, like, you know, I guess I could say, oh, no, well, I didn't have an eating disorder because I didn't, like, necessarily vomit while I was pregnant and things like that. But I know that I still did because I was still, I still had those thought patterns and I still was restricting and it, it, it consumed me during the whole pregnancy. So my eating disorder was probably at its best while I was mm. pregnant because there's always that you've got a life to look after more important yeah. than yourself. But it was definitely still there, and that is hard hard to admit because it doesn't just go away. You don't get pregnant and go cured. No, here, here, now, I'm done. Cured. Yeah, yeah no, look, look, I was a smoker. I was a smoker and drinking alcohol right up until I had found out I got pregnant. And no doubt I was smoking and drinking whilst I was pregnant because you have to go and get your test and then you find out and you go, oh, I'm going to stop smoking and I'm going to stop drinking. I stopped while I was pregnant, but then I the addiction is still there. Yeah, the issue is still there. So obviously I was like picking it up and putting it down. And I did that for, for, for a number of years. I don't smoke now. I still drink, but I don't me smoke. Either. Me either. I quit too. Yeah. It's, it's and I and it's and it is it's a self-loathing thing. Like for me, it I now look back and go, why was I doing that? Knowing and it's like a it's a form of self-harm. Yeah. You're so yeah. right. It really is. You know it's bad. And you know what? When I decided to quit, I quit with every pregnancy as well. But the second I had the baby, I was like back onto it. Um, <laughs> but for me, it was I started um, working on my fitness health-wise. And yeah. I was like, I suddenly was like, I don't want to undo all the good work and put smoke into my lungs anymore. Yeah. Like I don't want to yeah. do that. So it was that that turning of I value my body more than I did. Yeah, that's funny because I did the same thing, exactly the oh. same thing. Yeah, and it was just being at a gym, and I I'm, I was going through a lot of other issues as well. But still, again, it's so good, so good for your mental health. Going to the gym was a lifesaver for me, uh, especially when I was going through some hard stuff um, a few years back. And it just, it's unbelievable what it does, what exercise does for your mind. And it just it's made me go, it. yeah. Do you know my PT at the time, shout out to Ian Jacobs, he literally said to me, he's like, hey, don't quit. He said, your body will make you quit. You'll stop yeah, yeah. because he pushes me to a point where it's like you actually can't smoke. And I, I got to that point. He planted that seed in my head and I never looked back. I haven't smoked since. And because you suddenly, like you learn to run and like you've never been able to run before and suddenly you're running and you, you're like, I can breathe. I don't, I don't want to not, I don't want to feel that again. It's like mum, my trainer kills me as well. Um, shout out to Makala. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So good. <laughs> MJ personal training. Um, but, um, when I um, have a crap eating weekend, she knows. And she's like, how do you feel? And I'm like, I really like, it's okay. Like, like, don't get me wrong. It's fine to eat the pizza and the chocolate and whatever. But some weekends I just go like a bit hard and yeah. it makes me it makes training so much worse and I almost end up in tears saying to her never again I'm never doing that again <laughs> you're gonna do it again <laughs> and I do it. I'll do it again I love my pizza <laughs> I, I'm a chocolate fiend like literally um and again like I had a PT that would like give me Tim Tams while I was on the exercise bike I'm like you're the best PT ever the best <laughs> mine's um lint lint chocolate balls that's my weakness delicious i love it mm. listen thank you i look i would sit here and talk to you for hours i just think you're just so you're such a beautiful soul and i'm really 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 looking forward to, if you'll have us we'll come down we'll organize for a journal to come down and cover your event that um, would be we'll amazing. We, yeah well we'll see if we can make it happen but um i just want to say a big huge thank you to you um for everything you. that you stand for and for and your energy you and for your awesome. output oh no, thank you. Thank you. This is me thanking yes. you as a guest. Should we just keep going backwards thanks, and forwards? Thanks, everyone. <laughs> thank no, everybody. you, everybody. Thanks, you. For everyone. 
<laughs> it's like, no, you hang up. No, you hang up. <laughs> Bye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate it. And we are, for anybody that's got any questions, there are questions that are in the side and there are comments that have come in um, and I just oh, really okay. want to let the flow happen. So you're more than welcome to jump on and, and interact with, with our guests. So I just want to say a huge thank you for joining us today. You are amazing and I look forward to following your journey soon. Thank you. Thank you, darling. Bye. Bye.